Alright, in this little video I'd like to uh, give an overview of RSA cryptographic systems and also give an example of how we would implement one and encode and decode messages using it. So firstly, um, let's recall a few basic facts from the number theory that we will use in these systems. So the first fact relates to the solution of linear congruences. Recall that a linear congruence of this form, AX congruent to C mod N, that has a solution if and only if the GCD of A and N is a divisor of C. In that case, one such solution is given by the following formula. You take U times C, and we'll see what U is in a moment, divide it by the GCD of A and N. Now here, um, U is the coefficient when I express the GCD of A and N as a linear combination of A and N. It's the coefficient of U in this unique way in which we can express this as a linear combination of A and N. That gives you one specific solution. Now, of course, if this congruence has a solution, then it has infinitely many solutions. So the other solutions are given in this way. X is, well, we start with the specific solution we got in this way, and then we can add to it multiples of N divided by GCD of A and N. So multiples of this number where K ranges over the integers. Okay, so that's the first fact. We're going to need to solve certain linear congruences in setting up these cryptographic systems, and these are the facts that are pertinent. The next fact that we need to use um, is about Euler's function and Euler's theorem. So recall we had this phi of n function which acted on a natural number, and it gave you the number of natural numbers less than n which were relatively prime to n. So for example phi of 3 would be 2 because 2 and 1 are relatively prime, prime to 3. Phi of 4 would, which would we, well, would we count? We would count 1 would be relatively prime to 4, 2 wouldn't be, 3 would be, so there we'd also get 2. So what we knew is that for any prime number, phi of p was always p minus 1. And if I have the product of two primes, then, well, because these two are relatively prime, phi distributes over the product in this way. So this would give me p minus 1 times q minus 1 over there. So this is Euler's just a basic fact about Euler's function phi. Then there's a theorem, Euler's theorem, that tells us that if a and n are relatively prime, then a to the power of phi n is congruent to 1, modulo n. And these are the basic facts that we are going to use in our RSA cryptographic systems. All right, so let's get to the cryptographic system. So the cryptographic system is based on two large prime numbers, which we will call P and Q. So we need P and Q and N, which is the product of P and Q. Then we need two numbers, E and D, such that their product is congruent to 1 modulo P minus 1 times Q minus 1, i.e. the product ED is congruent to 1 modulo and P minus 1 times Q minus 1, because these two are two prime numbers, is nothing but phi of P times Q. Alright, so these are the ingredients. We need four numbers. 
two large prime numbers, their product, and two numbers E and D that together satisfy this congruence over here. So, if I choose my E to be relatively prime to 5N, then, well, relatively prime means the GCD is equal to 1. Then, if we go back over here, so this is my E, the GCD of this guy and this guy is 1. So if we go back to those basic facts about linear congruences, we see, well, this is my E, this is my N, and we're saying, well, they are relatively prime, so their GCD is 1. So that 1 will definitely divide the 1, which in this case is our C. So we will have a solution. So if you start with two prime numbers, you can always find at least an E. You, well, you, if you, and then you take an E, which is relatively prime to phi of P times Q. That's relatively prime to P minus 1 times Q minus 1. You will have a solution for D for this congruence. So you will be able to find an E and a D, which sets up the system for you. Once you've got that, this is how the cryptographic system works. You've got your public key, which consists of the product N and E, E for encrypt. So this is your public key. And then you've got your private key, which also consists of N, but instead of E, you've got your D, D for decrypt. And that's all it is. Now, how the actual encryption and decryption works is as follows. If I want to encrypt something, so I've got some message, um, let's call it um, M, message M. M is going, has to be a number, so it would be a numerical representation of the letter or the, the character or the string of characters that we want to transmit. So if my message is M, doing encrypt to M per definition is taking M putting it to the power E and taking the remainder after division by N. Similarly decrypt which we denote in this way you take the message or the encrypted message put it to the power D and you take the remainder of the division by M. Now, of course, we want encrypt and decrypt to be inverses of each other. So we need to make sure that this is the case. Okay, so suppose I s encrypted a message. So I took my message and I pl applied the public key to it. Now, the owner of this key applies his private key to the received message and we want to if this is to be a workable system this needs to give us m back d and e need to be inverses of each other so let's see what this do e of m took m put it to the power e and took the remainder of the division by n and then d applied to that put this to the power d and again took the remainder after division by n. All right. Now, recalling some laws of congruences, if I put something to a power, take the remainder after division by n, then do stuff to it, that, and take the remainder after division by n, well, I could just as well not have taken the remainder over here. This will be congruent modulo n to m to the e. So now, well, this is m to the e d, and we're taking the remainder, modulo n. That, now remember, e d is congruent to 1 modulo phi of n. That means I can write e d as some n goes in, say, k times, and it leaves... Uh, 
it goes k times phi n, and it leaves a remainder of 1. So all that I do is I, did is I took ed, because ed is congruent to 1 modulo phi of n, remember pq is n, it means phi of n, phi of pq, goes in a number of times into ed and leaves a remainder of 1. So I can write it as some number of times phi n plus a remainder of 1. Okay. Well, then that becomes phi m to the phi of n all to the power k times m, just explaining my laws of exponents over there. Now this m to the phi of n, now we recall Euler's theorem. Now m and n are relatively prime. So this to the power of phi n should give me 1. So this becomes 1 to the power k, which is just 1. This gives me rm remainder n. And because we only encrypt messages which are strictly smaller in their numerical representation than n, the remainder after I divide m by n is just simply m. m is something smaller than n. So this just gives me m. So indeed, these two functions, the encrypt and the decrypt function, the public and the private keys, are inverses of each other.